This week's video is produced by Thomas Friend. The bad guy in the movie wants to be a god so bad. His quest to be a god can be reached if he unites these extraterrestrial items. And only then can he receive total supremacy. The villain has been reading way too much Genesis 6 through 9 and believes the world must evolve. And in order to do so, death will be the key. Death will create an opportunity to bring balance to the universe by wiping out half of all life. The only force strong enough to stand in the way of the evil menace's master plan are the heroes, but they're disbanded. Nerve is probably just gonna be disbanded. The Avengers broke up, we're toast. The bad guy attacks all the heroes while they're vulnerable. The villain sends his forces to annihilate some soldiers while they're least expecting it. They end up slaughtering most of the staff working that day. One of the heroes is up next on the chopping block, and you think just because of the background music, he's about to die too, but uh-uh. He saved at the last minute, and probably the most selfless act of bravery since Chazu killed himself on Nappa's back in DBZ. This character gives his or her life to deliver this guy to safety. What's sad is that this is a waste of a sacrifice, because after the traumatic experience, experience, the survivor is too scared to fight and spends most of the movie hiding from the action like a little baby. Instead of burying the bodies and giving the warriors an honorable burial, kaboosh. The bad guys blow them up and cremate them instead. Meanwhile, Earth's mightiest hero waits on backup while the villain's henchmen try to kill them off one by one. A gruesome scene where one of the henchmen sneak up behind the good guy and stabs him in the back is shown. And if you're watching this with kids, cover their eyes. Also, the bad guys try to rip the red armor to shreds. When the dust settles, the character in the red suit is nowhere to be found and no one could confirm if the hero is dead or alive. We can't determine whether or not the pilot is alive or dead. With most of his enemies out of the way, the villain grows too confident. He visits his daughter because she was the key to one of the elements he needs for his master plan. He asks nicely, but his daughter can't stand him and says hell no. They have the bad guy right where they want him. All the good guy has to do is pull the trigger. The good guy but the gun doesn't work. The bad guy doesn't need a gun to be a deadbeat father. He kills his daughter and sends her flying like Mufasa did. After witnessing the ruthlessness of the villain, the heroes don't want any innocent civilians getting hurt. They take the fight way out to the countryside. They're surrounded by the villain's mindless henchmen. At first, they're winning, but I guess they got tired or something and start getting that work. The scaredy cat from earlier jumps into a suit to help out and his friends stand around while he gets jumped. The fight goes on for a while and the property damage alone is probably north of a billion dollars. The red armored hero gets stabbed. It's pretty embarrassing. The hero in the suit starts begging for mercy and it's pretty pathetic. This stabbing is literally the last nail in the coffin. The elements are united and then boom, it's like a nuclear blast so no one could run or hide. The secret weapon is activated and it looks like the end of all mankind. People start disintegrating left and right, and it's all the bad guy's fault. It cost him everything to unite the items. Pun intended, it literally cost him an arm and a leg, since his arm is injured at the end of the movie. You could tell he doesn't really feel any remorse. He's reunited with the ghostly form of his loved ones, and you could tell by the look on his face that he's at peace with all of his actions. Those are 24 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so? If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below and click the subscribe button for more 24 reason videos. <gasps>